Oh boy. Morning. Thank you. So my wife and I own a little place called Han Oak. Hey, you bet. <laughs> okay. Well, for those of you who haven't, um, you're going to want to punch in our address into Google Maps because it's going to drop you off in the middle of the street in Northeast Portland. Now, this is where you have to trust me. That parking lot, go to the back of that parking lot and go through the unmarked set of doors and our hidden courtyard opens up. There's some scooters and stuff you got to watch out for. You know, they're all booby traps. <laughs> then you go through another door and down a hallway and you're in our garage space, our dining room and open kitchen. So these days, I'm holding our 10-month-old Frankie. We call him Frank the Tank. I got to like wear him in an ergo and I'm in the corner making dumplings somewhere. My wife's son is chasing around Elliot. You can see he's not wearing clothes because he's potty training and three years old and thinks he's Captain Underpants. <laughs> is he here? So you might have noticed by now, um, this is our family home. Our business is our home and our home is our business. It just happens to be a restaurant. Although I've struggled to call it a restaurant since the very beginning because I think it brings with it a lot of expectations we couldn't live up to in the first year or so. We were only open two days a week and our staff were all our friends and family. They had full-time jobs but were sort of coming and helping us bailing me out on their weekends. But you know, we were just trying to figure it out, navigate our live-work sort of, you know, divide find our place among all the amazing restaurants here in Portland. And it was a significant time because that first year, Elliot had just turned one and he was, you know, learning to walk, but like really falling a lot. And uh, even now when we hire new staff, I tell him, yeah, you're a cook, you're a server, but I got like kids running around, man, you're a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> but the result is truly a community built around our home. Our regulars have become our friends, and our friends have become part of the family. When we open our doors, it's this sense of community that really is about place more than a restaurant. Place first. So place first is the idea that I stumbled upon during our journey. It's come to form everything we do, how we choose to live, work, play, and evolve. The priority was put on the environment we create, not the business model we'd pursue, but that model, that method, place first, is contrarian to how one starts a business, right? Because typically you figure out what you want to do, then you figure out how. Well, we were pretty dead set on the how. I think we're still figuring out the what. This is a little opposite from my background, so, so or my training anyways, my a little background. In 2001, I graduated from the U of O. I followed my brother out to New York, he promised me free rent while I figured out what the hell I was going to do with my life. I, that gave me, I think, two, three years to bum around. And during that time, I found an interest in cooking. And I thought, you know, I'll either drop a bunch of money back in school, go into further debt, or maybe I'll just walk in somewhere and try and get a job dishwashing. I'll work my way up. So I was actually on my way downtown. I was going to enroll in cooking school when I just sort of, on a whim, made a stop. I took a little side street, quiet corner in the West Village. I walked into this small restaurant, cute little uh, spotted pig hanging from the window, and I asked for a job. But what I didn't realize is that I had basically fallen ass backwards into one of the most high-profile restaurants in the city, in the country, I think. And I didn't get that dishwashing job, I was a fry bitch. And we sold a lot of burgers, so a lot of fries. But before I knew it, I had gone from fry bitch to line cook, line cook to sous chef, and sous chef to head chef. In almost 10 years, I had been chewed up and spit out of the Michelin starred meat grinder. The last five of those 10 years, I was the executive chef of the Breslin in New York's Ace Hotel. Now, <laughs> so, a restaurant that's open, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We had 24-hour room service. I think we did like, you know, five, six, 700 covers a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's a lot like Groundhog's Day. 
you wake up with this like foreboding sense of deja vu. It's the same damn day over and over again. But you wake up and you like try something different, right? You figure out your angles, you hope for a better result. You find your small successes, but you gotta like take your losses because for me at that time, it wasn't about the passion for food and cooking. It was more about the ritual and repetition. But if you do it the right way, the reward for that grind is excellence. And that level of excellence was my cooking foundation. It also awarded my chef, my mentor, a nomination for the James Beard Awards. So now this is the Oscars of the food world, right? So the highest honor in our field and all the best chefs in the country come to New York and they all you know, walk the red carpet. And I got to sit in the audience and root for her. But I sat there and I noticed something. Chef after chef, walking up on stage, they would say thank you, but then they would apologize. They apologized for their time away from home. I'm sorry for the long hours. I'm sorry for the stress. I'm sorry for putting my career above family. And I started to hear the apologies more than the thanks and gratitude. But it was definitely my own guilt that made me hear it because for 10 years I had worked through every holiday and missed most special occasions and, and my only trips back here to Portland weren't to see my parents, it was for work. This was an epiphany for me and I remembered it so clearly when I got that phone call. Mom has stage four breast cancer. It flipped my world upside down. My career in an instant seemed over and everything I worked for immediately took a backseat. So we pack up everything and we move immediately to be with her. And between visits to the doctors and chemotherapy, I tried to like piece together some like form of my cooking career, but the move had really like forced me to, to push away from that old restaurant grind. The next couple of years, the treatments improved mom's health. And while it's a battle she fights every day, Sun and I were eager to start our next chapter. Because just as we started to get settled and comfortable in Portland, we got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Another life flipper, right? So naturally, what do I do? I panic and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start a restaurant. Because that's smart, <laughs> right? But, I, but like, that's all I knew. And I had the plan because with all the advice I had gotten and all my years of experience, I, I, I knew that this was going to work. So develop a concept. Portland's first Korean gastropub. I, I think it can still work, right? <laughs> It'll kill. Secure funding. So maybe do an elaborate Kickstarter or you know, find a celebrity investor, tech millionaire, anybody, like anybody with FE money, because <laughs> you don't, you don't want to like lose your life saving. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then make sure it can scale, because fast casual is the future, right? Open one in every corner of the city, you sell it off for millions, and you ride off into the sunset. But these methods weren't working for us, and every listing we saw really just gave me that sense of deja vu. It's that restaurant life PTSD. And that maxim, place first, kept coming back to us. And rather than setting out to open a restaurant, it was my wife who sort of smacked me over the head and said, why can't we have both? Why can't we find a collaborative workspace, a test kitchen, a gathering place for our friends and family? For once, can we have a yard, a garden? With a new baby, we barely left the house, and so we would really try and bring the world to us. And we were determined to figure out a way that I could be a father first, but still be a chef. And this is how we were going to do it. You know, she couldn't do the traditional anyways. That's not really her training. She's an incredible artist, and let's face it, the real creative talent in the family. My true contrarian North Star. So now our approach to the restaurant was gonna be different. A true family restaurant. One where we'd only be open a couple days a week because I, I was still accompanying my mom to her treatment. 
one where our family would be ingrained in every day, a sanctuary for burnt out cooks. I sort of created a safe place for the biggest burnout. That's, that's me. <laughs> and where the traditional French brigade kitchen hierarchy was kind of thrown out the door. And where our staff can also benefit from our family first philosophy. And most importantly, I get to cook with my mom. So now, this sounds like the promised land, right? So where are we going to find it? Craigslist. <laughs> so it turns out there's a real estate developer who found himself in a position to sort of bridge the gap between family and his business. And he puts it online on Craigslist and son finds it and she's like, okay, we're going. She drags me kicking and screaming. I'm fighting her tooth and nail and I tell her it's one of those Craigslist scams. It can't be for real. And then we arrive in the middle of the street looking for this damn parking lot. <laughs> so we walk through the doors and we revel in this sense of discovery, this sort of hidden urban oasis. And who do we find standing there in the middle of the courtyard? Kevin Kavanaugh. <laughs> it was a brief meeting. I, you know, he's a busy guy. We exchanged some emails. We had a you know, firm handshake. But after a hug that really sealed the deal, he just like handed us the keys and he said, you know, we'll figure out the lease later. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, and we believed him because... You know, we saw this place and we were like, there's no way we can like walk away from this. We're going to take it. It's three times our budget. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, we thought about, you know, our restaurant how to. We didn't have a concept. We had no money. We borrowed from son's family and I maxed out all my credit cards. You know, a good location. We were like hidden. People still can't find us today. <laughs> and... Whether it can scale or not, we didn't know if we can even get the place open. So, <laughs> what was once his family's home became our family home, and what we have built as Hanuk. It's still a work in progress, though, and we've really allowed it to grow organically. We've only done as much as our family can handle. But for now, having fun is the goal with plans of summer-long tiki bars. We're building out a little ceramic studio. Right now we cook, but the door is open to evolution. And as any new business owner or even new parent knows, the long days, well, the long hours have gotten much longer and the days and years are getting shorter and shorter. I find myself back in a grind, but in a new way. Because to be able to step off the hotline in the middle of service to witness Elliot's first steps, to be able to brush the kid's teeth and read him a book and put them to bed every night, to be able to close a restaurant for every holiday and every special occasion, that's what gets me out of bed every morning. The priority is put on the environment we create, not the business model we pursue. The priority was to find our place and build it. Because even though we're a restaurant right now, it's about so much more than just the food. While we've been honored with the feedback, the recognition and awards were never really the goal. They're a byproduct of creating our home. So now, when people ask me what to keep in mind when starting a new business, my list is pretty different from the one that was shared with me. But I always give four pieces of advice to those going out on their own. You have to put in the time and do the work. That's your foundation. And then find somewhere to learn the right way. You can even spend some time in a place to learn the wrong way because that will help you discover your own way. And then build a place where you want to be. Hopefully there's a good chance others will want to be there too. So we couldn't have dreamed of being where we are today I'm like, I'm standing here at TEDx Portland, which is the most amazing thing. What am I doing here? <laughs> what am I doing here? You know, we just, we didn't want to build this restaurant. We just wanted to build your favorite place 
where everyone would feel at home and where thank you would be greater than I'm sorry. Thanks, Mom. I love you. Thank you.